Hi everyone, this is Filma Yuzon, a student from NCMA Nursing Caregiver Management Alliance. Our topic for today is about the 10 qualities and attitude of a caregiver. Number one is patience. To be a good caregiver, patience is the key when dealing with patient and service users with diminished capabilities. For example, if you are dealing with a dementia patient, you have to talk to them often and in a nice way. Number two is cherry demeanor. Cherry meaning bright and pleasant. Demeanor means the way a person behaves towards others. You have to show to your patients that you are happy and you are comfortable with your job. And if you have personal issues or personal problems, Please avoid bringing it to your working place. Number three is multitasking. This is to deal with more than one task at the same time. For example, like if you create a daily routine, for example, like preparing a meals, um, preparing a meals for your patients, their medicines, clean your patient's room, and you have to be, you have to have initiative. To handle all your tasks in, a, in an organized way. Number four is being able to think quickly. As a good care caregiver, you have to be smart and alert enough. For example, if something happens to your patients, you have to inform. The first thing you have to do is you have to inform first to the family. And of course, you have uh, to call an ambulance to help to ask for help. Number five is punctuality. As a good caregiver, punctuality is one of the most important. You have to be on time with your duties. And if you are not feeling well and can't come to work, you have to inform to the family and you can arrange a reliever for you. And, and for example, if you relieve to someone else, please avoid canceling on the spot. It is not good for you and also it can damage and spoil your image and reputations. Number six is willingness to learn. Willingness to learn is defined as a desire to learn more knowledge and you have to learn and get ideas from a person ahead of you. For example, those uh, registered nurses and doctors. Number seven is being a good listener. As a caregiver, you have to follow and pay attention on what the doctors advise. And you have to follow instructions properly. And especially in giving medicines to your patients. Uh, please be careful not to give the wrong medications to your patients. Number eight is kindness and empathy. You have to be kind and being friendly and considerate to your patients and to understand them and how they feel and you have to listen to them as well. Number nine is willingness to go extra mile. As a caregiver, uh, you have to make more effort or extra effort to go extra mile. And if you are able and you are willing to go extra mile, then why not? And it is not only for you and also you are helping to your patients and to the family of your patients as well. Number 10 is being able to take the responsibility. Being able to take the responsibility, the responsibility is to take care of your patients. And also, for example, if you are not feeling well and cannot come to work, it is your responsibility to manage and get a reliever for you and also you can inform to the family as well and that's for our topic for today and thank you for watching hi everyone this is Filma Yusan from NCMA Nurse Caregiver Management Alliance for today's video I'm going to demonstrate on how to do infant bathing procedure so first is we need to uh, gather our supplies. So we need a bathtub, soap, shampoo, rubber mat, baby's clothes, warm water, lotion, alcohol, baby powder, cotton swab, 
cotton balls, petroleum jelly, a diaper, thermometer, cloth, and towel. So the first thing we're gonna do is we have to provide privacy for the baby. So we have to close the curtain and then we have to switch off the air can and we have to wash our hands. So assuming we already wash our hands. So let's start. So we have to carry our baby. So assuming this is our baby. So the first the first thing we have to do is we have to check the water temperature using our elbow. So let's check the water temperature. It should be warm but not hot. So the first thing is we have to clean the baby's face. Let's start with the eyes. So dip, dip the cotton balls dip into the warm water. Squeeze from the inner cantus down to the outer cantus. Discard. Deep and squeeze from the inner cantus down to the outer cantus. Discard. Deep and squeeze from the forehead down to the cheek, down to the chin. Discard. From forehead down to the cheek, down to the skin. Discard. So after that, we have to also clean the no strills of the baby using the cotton swab deep into the warm water. Just clean the outer part of the nose strill of the baby. Discard. And also the ears. Deep and the warm water. Clean the outer part of the ear. Outer part of the ear. Discard. Then the next step is we have to wet the baby's hair. So, we have to carry the baby into the bathtub using, we have to carry by uh, holding it like a football hold position. So, this is the football hold position. We have to wet the hair of the baby and then shampoo. Just massage gently and slowly and then rinse thoroughly. And then carry the baby back. And then we have to dry the baby's hair. Then we have to undress the baby. Then remove the diaper of the baby. Next is we have to clean the genital part of the baby using cotton balls, deep and squeeze. Then from the clitoris down to labia minora, down to the vagina, down to the anus, discard. Deep and squeeze from clitoris down to labia majora, down to the vagina, down to the anus, discard. Deep and squeeze from the lab clitoris down to the vagina down to the anus discard then the diaper put into the hamper same thing with the clothes then before we bath the baby we have to check the baby's temperature so assuming this is our temperature thermometer so we have to clean it or sanitize using the alcohol so we clean from the cleanest to dirtiest, so the upper part is the cleanest, down to the dirtiest. And then we check from the anus of the baby. So before we do that, we have to put a petroleum jelly. So we check that. So if the temperature is normal, so let's start. Before that, we have to clean our the thermometer so using the alcohol so now we clean to the dirtiest down to the cleanest so our dirtiest is this part I uh, know our cleanest is this part so clean it from cleanest to dirtiest this part 
Okay, now let's start uh, bathing the baby. So using this cloth, dip into the warm water, put soap, and then slowly, slowly clean the baby, wash the baby. Pay attention to the skin fold of the baby. Dip and squeeze, put soap, and also fingertips of the baby and the toes of the baby. Then we have to carry, put the baby in side position. So we have to support his one arm. So, and then clean the back part of the baby gently. Then after that, we have to carry the baby, rinse the baby, put into the bath tub in sitting position. So we gently rinse the baby Also, same thing in the back. Then we carry the baby. Now we have to change our towel. Put into the hamper. Then we change into new towel. So we have to dry our baby. And then now we dress up our baby. Lotion and baby powder is um the one is optional. It depends on the mother if they want to use it to their baby or no need. After that, assuming this is our pampers, so let's put pampers. And then we have to wrap the baby into in a cloth so it's done so we put the baby now into the cream thank you so much for watching Wash your hands and wear gloves. Place the patient in comfortable position. Remove bedspread and blanket. Fold and place on laundry basket. Cover top sheet with a large towel. Remove top sheet without disturbing the towel and place in laundry basket. Undress the patient. Give mouth care if needed.
Wash eyes first. Start at inner corner and work out. Use different area of washcloth for each eye. Wash, rinse, and dry face, ears, nose, and mouth. Wash, rinse, and dry neck. Expose arm further from you. Place towel under the arm. Wash and rinse shoulder and arm, and let it dry. Repeat the process on the other arm. Expose the leg farther and place towel under the leg. Wash and rinse leg and foot. Dry leg, foot, and between toes. Repeat the process on the other leg. Place the towel and washcloth in a laundry basket and get clean once. Change bath water in basin and obtain a clean cloth. Assist the patient to turn on his side with back towards you. Fold the towel over the patient's side to expose his back. Wash, rinse, and dry patient's back and buttocks. Wash peri area from front to back. Place 
polyethylenein in appropriate container. Remove and dispose of gloves and wash hands. Good morning, Mr. Smith. My name is Filma and I'm going to take care of you today. May I see your armband? May I know your name and your date of birth? Okay. Today I'm going to want to change your bed sheet. Is that okay with you? Okay, I'm going to close your curtain and I will wash my hand and I'll be right back. Place a blanket over the patient and ask them to hold it in place. Slide the top bedding out from beneath the blanket and put it in the dirty linen. Position the patient to one side of the bed and begin removing the bottom fitted sheet and roll it up beneath the patient. Take a clean fitted sheet and place it on the corners where you just removed the soiled sheet. Roll the sheet up and tuck it beneath the soiled sheet. Place the draw sheet lengthwise along the middle of the bed and tuck the remainder under the patient's torso and buttocks. The pad should be hand folded or rolled under the bottom sheet, keep the linen beneath the patient as flat as possible. Assist patient gently rolling the patient in moving to the other side of the bed on top of the clean sheet you just put down. Now with the other side of the bed free, you can finish removing the soiled sheet and extend the rest of the clean sheet across the bed and secure and flatten the sheet. Put the soiled laundry in the dirty linen.
assist the patient to position in the center of the bed. Place a new sheet on top of the privacy blanket and then pull down the blanket out from beneath the sheet and place it in the dirty linen. Secure the top sheet under the foot of the mattress so that it is flat on both sides. Loosen the sheet slightly so the patient's feet have some room to move. Ask the patient if they can let you remove the pillow from beneath their head. Remove the pillowcase without touching your uniform. Place the used pillowcase into the dirty linen. Put a new pillowcase on the pillow with the tag side going into the pillowcase. Place the pillow under the patient's head with the opening facing away from the door. Perform your standard completion task. Remove your gloves and hand hygiene. Hello everyone, I'm Filma Yusan from NCMA Nurse Caregiver Management Alliance. My next video is, uh, I'm, I will demonstrate on how to clean and sterilize feeding bottle and burping a baby. So, bago po natin umpisahan, kailangan po natin i-gather ang ating supplies. So, we gonna need a soiled feeding bottle brush, soap, uh, tubig na pang banlaw, at saka tong. So, before po natin gagawin, kailangan po natin ng hand hygiene. So, maghugas po tayo ng kamay at assuming na nakapaghugas na po tayo ng kamay. So, uumpisahan na po natin. So, assuming ito yung sabon, sa so lalagyan natin na siya ng sabon at saka assuming na may tubig. So, ganito po ang paglinis ng feeding bottle. Linisin po ang loob at saka ang labas. I-brush po natin para mawala ang mga milk residue ng bottle. Lagay natin siya sa bandawa ng tubig. Ang importante ay ang kanyang teeth or ang nipple. So, pwedeng gamitan natin ng ating daliri. Ipasok po natin. At saka, dilinisin. Or, gagamitan natin siya ng brush. So, ipasok po natin. At saka, dilinisin. Pati po ang labas. So, after natin mag 
hugasan ay babandawan po natin. Assuming na ibabandawan natin siya dito. Babandawan po natin ng 2 to 3 times or hanggang sa wala na pong bula at saka wala nang amoy ng sabon. So, assuming na na. Tapos na po natin bandawan. So, proceed na po tayo sa sterilizing a feeding bottle. Now, let's proceed to sterilizing a feeding bottle using a boiling water. So, ngayon, nagbo-boil po tayo ng tubig and then, uh, dapat po ay 3 fourth lang po ang ating tubig para hindi po aapaw pag kumukulo. So, kumukulo na po siya. Ilagay na po natin ang ating feeding bottle. And then, sterilize po natin siya ng 4 to 5 minutes. So, assuming po na 5 minutes na siya, so, ready na po siya. At atin na po siyang i-dry. So, i-off natin ang ating apoy. And then, ilagay po natin. Assuming na na-boil na siya ng 5 minutes, i-transfer natin siya sa tray or kung meron tayong feeding bottle dryer. Now, let's proceed to feeding formula. So, kunyari, uh, ito po yung milk at saka ito yung feeding bottle. So, if infant po ang baby, so hanggang dito lang po siya. So, uh, kunyari po, uh, babasahin natin yung label nito kung uh, ilang scoop po. So, is to scoop natin siya. And then, halimbawa po, uh, dalawang ganito at saka ilang tubig po. Gagamitan po natin siya ng tubig, boil, uh, mineral water, uh, pwede rin i-boil siya after po siya ano, palamigin po, after mag-warm na siya at saka lagyan na po natin ng warm water and then imimix natin ng hot water and then assuming na may gatas na siya at saka water and then tatakpan po natin and then isi-shake po natin, dapat ang pag-shake po ay paganyan hindi po siya yung ano, para po siya ay uh, magmimix po yung milk sa loob. So, and then, after po, dapat uh, tatakpan po at saka hindi po dapat gagamitan ng kamay kasi marumi po ang ating kamay. So, dapat po siya nakatakip. So, after po nun, after po natin nagawa ang kanyang milk, kunyari, uh, wapadili po tayo ng baby. So, kailangan po, ah, uh, naka ganyan po siya hindi po siya naka ganyan so naka ganyan po siya tapos eh uh, papadirit po natin lagyan po natin siya ng bibs and then ay uh, padirit po natin ang baby ah uh, uh, kailangan po na comfortable po ang baby or uh, pwede po tayong upo so ganun po ipadirit na din siya and then after in the middle of feeding, pwede na po natin siyang ipaburp. So, ibiburp natin siya. Lagyan natin ng towel dito sa ating balikat. Inuhold natin ang baby. Nakaganun po. Dapat nakahinga po ang baby. Tapos, ikakares po natin yung likod. Paganyan, hanggang makaburp po ang baby. Or, um, kung nangyari, kung sakali hindi siya makaburp, okay lang po. So, ipagpatuloy po natin. I ipaganyan po natin siya. And then, pwede po natin ipagpatuloy yung pag-feed niya. And then, um, pwede po natin ang next way po ng pagpapaber, pwede po natin siyang maupuin. Nakasupport po yung kamay natin dito sa, dito po sa may ano niya, baba niya. Naka ikaris po natin yung dito. So, nakaganyan po tayo. Hanggang makabirth po ang baby. Or if in case, meron pong mga gatas na lumalabas po sa bibig niya, normal lang po yun. Uh, tapos, um, pagkatapos po ng birth ng baby, kailangan na, pwede na po natin siyang ilagay sa kanyang crib at patulogin. Hi and 
everyone, my name is Phil Mayuson, one of the trainees from NCMA Nurse Caregiver Management Alliance here in Malaysia. Today, I'm going to demonstrate NGT and PEG tube feeding procedure. Here are the supplies we need. A jug of water, oral nutrition supplement as prescribed, medication, syringe, gloves, face towel, pH strips and small bowl, feeding schedule. First, we have to review physician's order. Next is we are going to wash our hands and provide privacy. Then, we have to introduce ourselves and verify patient ID and explain the procedure. Then, we have to elevate the bed to 45 degrees angle. Then, wear a glove. Hi, Mr. Smith. I'm Filma, and I will be the one to take care of you today. Can I see your armband? Could you please tell me your name and your date of birth? Okay, thank you. And today, I'm going to give you your oral supplement and your medication, okay? Okay, so we already elevate the bed to 45 degrees angle. Then we have to put... A towel under the patient's chest. Can you please open your mouth? Okay, we have we need to check if the tube is not coiled. So okay. So next is we have to check if the tube is in place inside the stomach. We have to inject twenty cc of air open the stopper and we have to listen the sound put the stethoscope in the stomach and then inject 20 cc of air so we listen a whooshing sound it means the tube is in the right place and then you have to aspirate or withdraw gastric content if you are unable to withdraw a gastric content you have to wait 15 to 30 minutes and try again. And then close the stopper. Check the pH level. So the pH is below 5 or equal to 5. It means the patient is ready to fit. Next is insert the syringe. Open the stopper. Flush with 20 ml of water. Then elevate the tube slightly above the patient's head. Make sure you do not empty your uh, syringe to prevent air from getting inside the stomach. Next is give the oral nutrition supplement. If there's any medication, medication should be given in the middle of feeding. So give the medication. And then, final flush is 30 ml of water. Then, close the tube bay with a stopper. Let the patient in this position for around 30 to 45 minutes to avoid gastric reflux. Then, you have to wash your hands and document a chart. Let's proceed to PEG tube feeding procedure. First, elevate the bed to 30 degrees angle. Put a towel on the patient's stomach. Then you have to check any redness or any signs of infection and document it. Next, we have to aspirate some gastric content. Open the tube, aspirate some gastric content, and document. Close the tube. Then open the tube and insert back the gastric content. Close the tube. Insert a syringe. 
plunge with 30 ml of water. Open the tube. The next is the venturized food. Ensure that the syringe is not empty to prevent air from getting inside the stomach. Then every feed you have to flush with 20 ml of water or it depends on the fluid intake of the patient. Next is the medication. Then flush with 60 ml of water or it depends on the fluid of the patients or as prescribed. Close the stopper and remove the syringe. Put the tube in the right place. Let the patient in this position for around 45 minutes. Then document a patient's chart. Take off your gloves and do hand hygiene. Hey guys, I'm Filma Yuson, a trainer from NCMA Nurse Caregiver Management Alliance. For today's video, I'm going to show you and I'm going to demonstrate on how to transfer the patient from bed to wheelchair. So the first thing we want to do is we have to perform hand hygiene. And wash our hands. And then we have to apply the seven steps of hand washing. to sanitize our hands then we have to have the patient's privacy we have to close the curtain then we have to place the wheelchair uh, beside the bed facing the wheelchair above the in the footrest of the bed and before we get us and then we, That's okay. then we have to make sure we have to lock uh, the wheel wheelchair And then before we're going to start, we have to introduce ourselves to the patient and uh, the, we have to ask the patient and the patient's name and the age. So, hey madam, this is uh, Filma and how are you? And then, uh, may I know your name? My name is Lucy. And your age? I'm 41. Okay. Uh, today, I'm going to do, um, to transfer you from bed to wheelchair. Is that okay? So this is the procedure. We have to place the hand. Then we have to uh, let the patient uh, on the sideways. And then place our hand under her, her head. And then push. And then let the patient move forward. Put the, the hand of the patient on your shoulder. And then by the count of three, one, two, three. And then unlock the wheelchair. And then that's all for today and thank you for watching. Hi guys, I'm Thelma Yusun, one of the trainee from NCMA Nurse Caregiver Management Alliance. Today, I'm going to demonstrate on how to take vital signs. So first is we have to wash our hands, provide um, patients privacy, introduce ourselves and get patients identity and explain the procedure. And then we need our supplies. So we need a stethoscope along with the blood pressure cuff. We need a blood sugar kit, a thermometer, oximeter. And also, we need some alcohol swab. So, let's start. Hi, Mr. Smith. I'm Filma, and I will be the one to take care of you today. Can I see your armband? Could you please tell me your name and your date of birth? Okay. 
thank you today i'm going to take your um, vital signs okay okay so the first we uh, check the oxygen saturation the normal oxygen saturation is between a um 95 to 100 percent so assuming this is our oximeter place it in the finger of our patients and then the oxygen saturation is normal 97 next is the temperature the normal temperature is between 97 to 99 degrees fahrenheit so assuming this is our thermometer so now i have to check using the arm and we have different types of checking the tem temperature we can use a auxiliary we can use a orally rectally tympanically so now we are using like this and we wait for our temperature to beep then it's done okay so the temperature is normal next is the heart rate heart rate the normal is 60 to 100 beats per minute so using your finger put into your patient's wrist then palpate for around 30 seconds for example if um the beats is 32 you multiply it by 2 so it's 64 so it's normal while checking the heart rate you also can check the respirations to check the respirations you have to see the patient's rise and fall of their breathing so one rise and one fall is equivalent to one breath and you don't have to tell the patient then you that you are taking getting his uh, respiration so that he won't feel anxious and the normal respirations is 12 to 20 beats per minute next is we check blood pressure so assuming this is our spent manometer so let's put into our patient's arm put it nicely and in a right way and then put our stethoscope into the brachial artery and then assuming that we inflate the cuff then slowly release it the first sound we hear that is the uh, systolic and the second sound we hear that is the diastolic and the normal blood blood pressure is 120 over 80 next is we check the blood sugar so using the swab, we have to clean the patient's finger. And then this one, we insert a needle. It's already inserted inside. Then put to number three and release it. Then pinch the needle into the patient's finger. And then take a test strips. Put some blood into the test strips. Put into the meter. Then wait for the readings. So readings is 5.3. That is normal. The normal fasting reading of blood sugar is around 3.9 to 5.5. So after all done, you have to record or document the results of the vital signs of your patients. And then you have to do hand hygiene and clear all the things that you use. Thank you so much for watching.